Okay, let's get started. Uh, so good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Shi Kai Fang. I'm the PhD student of the Professor Shen Dian. Uh, and today I will give you a tutorial on the PyTorch. I mean, you will use this framework in your following project and homework to handle the deep learning. Uh, I think today's tutorial should be quick, quite short and quickly. Uh, I plan to use maybe 20 or 30 minutes to finish this. And all the video and the slides I will upload to the website. So after the tutorial, you can, you can still find it. So let's get started. Uh, so, I mean, my tutorial will include two parts. The first part, I will give you a very introduction about PyTorch and other very famous, I mean, their deep learning framework uh, and show you some how to install the PyTorch and give you some examples. Uh, actually, uh, the second part, uh, actually we built a GitHub page, I mean, under uh, hand by hand tutorial, give you some example in the uh, Jupyter notebook. So uh, you can also, after this tutorial, I encourage you to head to the GitHub page and uh, download the notebook and run the code case by yourself. So let's get started. So first, what is the PyTorch? So PyTorch, uh, if you uh, are kind of familiar with the machine learning community, you should have to hear about this name because actually that's a, a very famous open source machine learning library. And actually it's from the Facebook, uh, right now it's called Manta. And actually, uh, the, I think the most powerful features for the PyTorch is first, he leverage the power of GPU. Because when you try the big, big, especially the different neural network, there are lots of the computation about the matrix, about the tensor, and the PyTorch and other framework allow you to use the GPU to do the computation. So it's a lot of the acceleration. And actually, the second most important feature is the automatic computation of the gradient, uh, which is for short, which is called the auto grade. Because I think in your previous project, uh, you are allowed to use the NumPy. Uh, to compute the gradient by your by your hand. Uh, I mean, first you have to derive some formulation. I mean, for the logic regression, you have to do the derivation, write the formulas about the gradient, and then implement implement them one by one for your Python code. However, for different neural network, there's no closed form for the gradient formulas. But this this framework is PyTorch and other the I mean all the mainstream the uh, deep learning mainstream the framework allowed you to compute the gradient, not by hand, but just by core, one, one line code, auto grade. So all the computation of a gradient is uh, automatically finished. So with this case, with these good features, you can apply the optimization like the gradient descent very efficiently, but you don't have to, I mean, uh, der derive something on the paper and then uh, type them one by one, just one code and finish everything. So that's the second and very convenient feature of this PyTorch and uh, including PyTorch, lots of the other, uh, like the TensorFlow can also done this. But keep this two points in your mind. So compared to the NumPy, compared to some uh, machine learning, like the SKLR, scikit-learn, you, you have already learned, the most two features about PyTorch and this deep learning framework is one, it's allowed you to use GPU. Second, it's allowed you to auto gradient computation of your function of your model. Uh, and here is the song, like a very high level summary. And we have to the uh, history, a very brief introduction about the history of all the deep learning framework. Uh, I think there are lots of the deep learning framework uh, right now. I mean, even for the five years ago, uh, I think the very early one is called the CAFE or, the, or the, I think the Tiano. Uh, I think it's developed maybe 10 years or 11 years ago. So at that time, I mean, uh, playing with the deep learning model is very hard because, uh, I, like I say, it's hard to use the GPU. It's hard to compute the gradient at that time. And uh, Tiano and Cafe, I think, is a very, very, very early work. is a pioneer about in this in this field. Uh, and at this, but at this step, after develop I mean, different branches, different version, and from Cafe to Keras to TensorFlow, and there. And I think it's the big tech like the Microsoft and the Amazon apply then uh, develop then old framework like the, I think the MXNet the blue one is from Amazon and the CNTK is from Microsoft, but that time is gone. 
all the time, I mean, the mixture about uh, different framework is gone. Right now, the mainstream, I mean, is the PyTorch. There's no doubt PyTorch is the first one. It's the number one. It's the absolute, absolutely the mainstream about deep learning framework. Uh, so uh, right now, I'm also both in your project and even for as a PhD in machine learning, uh, I think we're encouraged to use the PyTorch, uh, but not use some very uh, the minor or non 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 minority the uh, this framework. So actually, the another I think very uh, important feature about this uh, PyTorch actually is called the uh, dynamic or static the computation graph. Uh, actually, uh, if you if you see the example I giving right here, so uh, the first one is just from the NumPy you are very familiar with. So you build our A and B and C. And uh, actually, when you define these variables, define the what is A, what is B, the computation is just following a flow way. I mean, you define A and he's compute A, and then you have to B, he compute B. And however, if you see the second example, I mean, the symbolic one in there, I think that code is from the TensorFlow. So actually, you first define something like A is a variable A, B is a variable B, C is a variable C something. Um, and the big A, B, C here, you see, they're not, they're just give a symbol here. They're not exactly the uh, exact number aside for that. So what's the meaning for this? I mean, the symbolic, or we call it a static graph, I mean, use some in some TensorFlow or something, is first, you don't assign the exact number of your variable, but you just define an abstract variable. And based on this abstract variable, like the capital ABC here, he, the computer, the computer, the compiler, we we'll first build what we call a computational graph and then compile it. And then this, you can imagine you use these things to build a flow, build a tube, I mean, between these variables. And when it's building, you, you finish compiling and then you, you feed, I mean, the num exact number, like the water in this flow system. So this is called the symbolic or we can call the static system. But actually this is done by the kind of flow. Uh, and actually it's smart, it's, kind of much faster because you don't have to define the dynamic uh, variable one by one, but you build the system and you are finished. You, you, at next time, you just follow the different uh, the number on this system. However, it's not the, comp the debugging and, and for these things is very, uh, make, make people crazy. It's very hard and very inconvenient to handle the, com the compiling and debugging for this symbolic. And the PyTorch, I mean, so I think it's why people like it, why it's become mainstream, because these follow a more natural way, just follow the first one, the NumPy. So there's not something like the, the, the second one, TensorFlow, we have to define something, compile first, and then feed the water, feed the, feed the number. No, just follow what you do in the nature uh, you are very familiar with, with the NumPy. Compile, define something and immediately compute it in. So, so I mean, the, here, I think this slide is just a comparison between the PyTorch and the TensorFlow. So PyTorch is just like the NumPy we are used, and by the TensorFlow and other things, you have to uh, very very complex. You have to compile first and then feed the water. So we are there at the first. We loved first. Um, here is the other like uh, based on these two classical, the imperative or symbolic. I mean, there's dynamic or static. There are, some, there are some other things, but you don't have to catch the detail. I'll just just remember, PyTorch is good. PyTorch is dynamic. Can make type PyTorch is nature. PyTorch is just like what we are using in NumPy. Uh, here is just some other information about the history and detail about this framework. Uh, actually, I don't want to go through it one by one, but just if you are interested, you can just see the history by yourself. Uh, here is just another example to show the power about the PyTorch, which you can gain from the GPU computation. So compare you compare with use the GPU and the use the CPU um, computation or, up to, uh, or update your deep learning model. You can always get like the uh, 60 times acceleration compared to the CPU. Uh, so here is still, uh, I think the computation here, if you use NumPy to compute the uh, matrix computation uh, 
from ABC is take 350 minus, minus second. However, for the PyTorch, if you do the same the matrix computation uh, you, on the GPU, is you only got the 0 0.1, the, so the minus second. So that's the reason, that's the things we like the GPU. We want to use the PyTorch. Uh, uh, here and here is a, another summary about what we talk about. So it's a Pythonic con concise. I mean, close to the NumPy we are used. You don't have to compile. Uh, you don't have to compile something, define define the from a computer graph first and then fit. It's more nature, and then it has the stronger GPU support. It's very easy to send your computation of your data of your model from CPU to GPU. You get lots of the uh, acceleration. And also, uh, I will show you later, uh, is uh, very conveniently support the auto gradient to let you compute the gradient uh, automatically, but not by hand. Uh, and there are lots of the algorithms and the model, like the deep model, deep convolution model, the uh, deep recursion neural network, like RNL stem. I mean, uh, almost the famous models in the machine learning, learning, they already have a very good the implement in the PyTorch. So when you start to build a neural network, you don't have to define the, uh, I mean, the fully net connective layer. You don't have to uh, define the convolution kernel by your ha handling, but just core the good block already have the per per perfectly uh, defined in the PyTorch. So it just make it very convenient to build their deep, net, deep, their deep model. Another, I, as I say, it's very similar to NumPy. Lots of the function like the uh, especially for, uh, the function in the, the linear algebra, for example, if you want to transform a matrix, you want to do the matrix complication. Now, that function in the PyTorch is exactly aligned with what you use in the NumPy. So if you are already very, very familiar with the NumPy, how to handle the vector, how to do the transformation, how to do the matrix tensor, I mean, reshape index. This you are very, you are very, you, you will be very smooth to transfer to the PyTorch because all the functions on um, tensor and matrix operator, they are PyTorch and NumPy. They are alike. Here is our, I mean, uh, example. Another example to show the why use PyTorch. I don't want to go into very detail, but just let you get a high level here. So NumPy is you are very familiar with. We define something and we do the computation. And uh, you can, as you can see here, uh, I can do some notation. Uh, here is the, uh, we define the random variables, and here we define the computation about between these variables. And here is the gradient about the variables we are we are we are concerned. So actually, I think you have done the similar things in your project. You have to define and compute the gradient of the formulas by yourself. And if you see the PyTorch, it's much more simpler. You can see the define about x, y, z, the variables is aligned with the, what you do in the NumPy. Just use the uh, torch random and require, require gradient or something. And then you define the computation on the x, y, z. And finally, you want, if you want to get the gradient of the C, you just call one line, just like, just, just like I mentioned previously. And we are done. Every gradient is computed. is is done. You don't have to like this way to compute by your by your hands. And uh, I mean the middle example is from the tenth law. Uh, and you can see is uh, I don't want to go to line by line by, by its code, but just let me know it's more complex. You have to it's more tricky. You have to define something. You have to fit the follow. You can you have to start something like the TensorFlow session. So right now you can totally ignore these things. I think in, because it's right now, I think most of the project of the paper about things, they have their PyTorch implementations. So you don't have to learn the turn of flow. And, and uh, besides installation about the PyTorch, it's much easier compared to the turn of flow. Because turn of flow has a lot of the version problems. If you version of your GPU, of your CUDA is not match, you will get trouble. But PyTorch, the, the capacity of the PyTorch is much more better compared to the time flow. Uh, okay, let's, let's, let's go ahead. First, let's my 
Yes. Yeah, here is just a plot to show you how popular about PyTorch in the academia. I mean, if you check the paper published in the top tier conference in the machine learning, you will find more and more papers use PyTorch. And I think the statistic right here is just uh, as the don't reach the 2020, but here and right now is 2023. So I think the percentage about the work use PyTorch in almost every the top tier conference, special learning conference, is is greater than I think eighty percent or ninety percent. So follow the follow the mainstream. Don't learn the Py, don't don't learn the TensorFlow or other things. Just learn the PyTorch. Um, and here I just give you a very some some. Uh, let's get to the detail about the, the TensorFlow. Oh, sorry, the PyTorch. So. Uh, Actually, this slide is kind of uh, out of date um, because I, I list there are some three here, things here, the tensor variable and module. Actually, the variable things is already we don't use right now in the in the latest version of our PyTorch. Just, just follow the tensor and the module. So what is tensor? The tensor I list here is just a lie with the MD array, the MD array what you use in the NumPy. So you just define the 1D vector, 2D matrix, 3D tensor, and 4D tensor. It's exactly what you use in your uh, NumPy, in your NumPy, the MD array. And module, what is module? Module is you define a neural network or, or model. So this model is can be abstracted as what we call the module, a class in the, in the PyTorch. So you can, when you define a module, that's included what your model, what's, de what's your deep learning model looks like, and you can, uh, define what's the computation process, what's the other trick you can divide. So everything, the two things you have to handle, one is tensor, is your data. And the second thing is your model, is called the module in the PyTorch. And here is, uh, I think is a very simple example. Uh, actually, I, I I won't go to very detail here because I will have to uh, exactly the uh, Jupyter notebook very, very quickly to show the exact example. But here just have a, High level things, uh, because uh, for example, if we want to define a tensor, I mean, tensor could be scalar. We just call the torch uh, random one, and you get a scalar. It's also a tensor. And if you want to, during the computation, you want to check the gradient about the things you, you, you just defined. When you define, you just add one, one line here. Is the compared to these two lines. So the first line, I just define a regular uh, tensor. I mean, use the, some random. And second, if I define something like the variables, is some parameters that I want to optimize. Optimize. So when I define them, I have to add an attribute called the required gradient equal to true. And that's become a, uh, we call a variable. And actually when you use T to in the following computations, you can use one line to compute the gradient about this T. However, when the definition about your tensor of your variable, so the variable, if you don't uh, attach that required gra gradient equal to true, the, the, you can now try the gradient about this. Uh, here is still an example I just gave previously, but we go through to the detail. We define the XYZ, and you see when we define XYZ, we allow this gradient, we require the gradient as true. And then we define the computation, either A equal to XY, B equal to A plus D, and see something. And then we call this line C back, back, backward. And this line just finished computation about all the gradients in the uh, formulas we just defined. And we, if you print the gradient of the data, gradient of your C, you can see all the gradient is here. All the gradient computation is, is finished. Okay, let's have to. Yeah, uh, and we already talked about the, I mean, briefly talk about the how to auto grade, how to auto automatically compute the gradients in the PyTorch. Here is another uh, about we're talking about another feature. I mean, how to put your computation in the GPU. Uh, in the PyTorch is very is also very easy. You can see here. Uh, just consider you already have some build some uh, NumPy matrix or variable or data. 
and you want to transfer to the PyTorch, you just run, um, let's still use the notation here. Yeah, just one line, torch from the NumPy, and and you just get back get back to the a uh, pi uh, sorry a uh, pytorch tensor. Uh, and here, this this variables. As already, we have defined our CPU variables or CPU tensor in your NumPy or in your pytorch. You and you want to send these things to the GPU. Just type this thing, the point two. And these things is sent to the GPU. So it's very simple. And uh, right now, UT, the, the tensor just defined, right now it's under, ten, it's under uh, GPU. And now it will just follow with some computation, matrix multiplication, even the gradient computation. All the computation were automatically uh, done on the GPU, but not the CPU. So it's very, it's very easy. And if, if for, for some case, if you want to check whether the GPU is available on your computer, also there's a one widely used line just to just to type touch CUDA is available is tell is true of course you can use their uh, you are safely to send your data to their GPU uh, here I think that's another auto gradient examples to define something. X, Y, Z, uh, X, W, B. I think it's exactly the, the linear regression, uh, the example you have down, uh, I mean, for your, for, your, for your last homework or this homework. And I think in that homework, we are allowed to uh, compute the gradient about your W, I mean, the weight of your linear regression and bias by yourself. But here, if you use PyTorch to, to, re to redo your the linear regression project, uh, it's very easy, I mean, you, you want to get a gradient, you just call one light of code and everything and print all the gradient. Uh, and I think in, in that your linear regression project, after you are handling, you, you, you handily compute the gradient of your the XWB, you also have to uh, use this gradient you just got to apply the stochastic gradient descent policy, also handily by hand. It's all very tricky and very complex. However, in the PyTorch, when you get a gradient, automatically gradient from your auto gradient, this, this code, optimize with the SGD is also very, very uh, easy and, uh, and, and simple. For here, I just show also see, uh, see you the uh, example here. For here, uh, you will see the code here. Yeah, we first define the AB. A, B is the variables uh, we define um, the tensor and require this variable to require the gradient as true. And then we define the optimizers. Optimizer uh, is just like the SGD here. And what's the gradient? What's the variable we want to update is A and B. And we want to can assign the learning weight, the LR here. And uh, when, how, how, how we can do the iteratively update with the SGD, with the gradient, you can see. The first, we just based on current A and B, we, we just build, build our prediction. And then we compute the arrow. Uh, that arrow is based on the linear regression and uh, linear regression model and with your ground truth. And then we compute the loss, the L2 loss. And what we do here, you, you see, we first, we call the loss backward. Just remind, there's a step to compute the gradient automatically for all the variables we want to, want to optimize. And then you don't have to, I mean, print out or get a gradient and then build the SGD one by one, but also just one, just two, just two step. The first, you just call the optimizer step. And in this line, it's automatically use the gradient from the last line, I mean, from the backward, and uh, he applied the, the SGD the alter, uh, to, to optimize your, uh, your variables in or in one light. So it's very simple. You don't have to compute the gradient. You don't have to implement the SGD step ourselves. That's just too light here. And after that, you have to call something called the optimized zero gradient because in the next step, you will get a new gradient, but you have to clear out all the gradient compute in this step. So all is done. In your linear regression uh, project, if you want to uh, implement this by NumPy, I think it's more than at least 20, 20 lines codes or more. 
However, for here, just three line, three line of codes to finish everything in, in, in what we have to use uh, 20 or 30 lines in your NumPy. Okay, I think we are almost close. Oh, the, la the last part about PyTorch is how to define the model. I mean, we also call it the module, just like, like I talked about previously, the NL module here. So uh, here I still give you linear, uh, the example about the linear regression because you are familiar with this one. Um, but actually, uh, other any other machine learning models like the deep learning, like other like the Bayesian models, you can follow follow this. You define a class, and this this class is just defined as some um, NN module. And in the NN modules, actually, the, the you can you can define lots of the methods. But two after must define and the most important things is first is the initial parts, initial methods. In the initial methods, you have to define the parameters or the variables you have to use to compute your models. And you have you want to optimize. For example, here, we still define the AB, just follow the last example here. And we define is the required rather equal to true or something. And in the forward methods, you define how you use these parameters, how you use uh, these variables to build the computation of your machine learning models. So right now, that's a perfectly uh, uh, class about the linear regression in the PyTorch and become an NN module. Uh, okay, I think that's the example I will give here. And last, uh, I will give some how to store and how to some example and we have your Jupyter notebook and tutorial is done. Uh, so to install PyTorch is also very, very convenient. You just type the PyTorch install, search in Google and type in the website and the website will automatically to detect what's your version of the GPU, what's the version of your, our system and give you a recommendation which, 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 which version of the CUDA you have to use. So it's, it's, it's very good. Uh, and here we have, last we have to the GitHub uh, tutorial uh, we built for this class. So you can see here is the tutorial web page, GitHub page uh, we built for, for this class. Um, yeah. This just give you a very detailed step-by-step -step, the instructions on how to install a CUDA environment and how to activate and how to install the PyTorch. Uh, I think for this, you can exactly follow this. And for the ins install PyTorch step, uh, I think this one, this, this live will install uh, at the, the prompter. You can copy from the PyTorch uh, website, just as saying, when you get the website with PyTorch, it will automatically detect whether you have your GPU on your computer, what's the system of your computer. And here will just give you a, a generate a line about this one. And you just copy and run on your own instance. Uh, and when you finish install the PyTorch, we we offer I think five different uh, notebook, Jupyter notebook. You can directly run and step by step to know how to use the PyTorch to build a machine learning model and for deep learning, even for the deep learning models. Uh, so during the time limit, uh, I I won't go to the very notebook here, but just to but the first one, and quickly go through it to show you how to use the PyTorch and how how the notebook looks like. Yeah, I mean, first of course you have to import the PyTorch, import the. I just ask to me. You have to, you have to uh, import the NumPy, and then you check the system device. I mean, whether you have the GPU on your system, which is uh, the PyTorch can use. If it's not, it's okay. Because uh, for I think for the project you are doing in this course, your CPU in PyTorch uh, is sufficient. You, you don't have to use the GPU for, for things. Here, I just show you some, some code to check whether uh, you have the GPU. And here is some example I just show you in the slides, but here just give you exact, exactly code. So how to define your tensor I mean, X, X, uh, I think the example here is still the linear regression and how to 
uh, compute the gradient. I mean, use the tensor backward to get a gradient of a web variable. Uh, and actually, there's 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 two ways. I think two ways to compute the gradient. You of course you can use the uh, backward tensor backward to get a gradient automatically, and you can also uh, gather a touch of gradient grids to gather gradient or even a higher higher the high order gradient. Uh, uh, I encourage you to check it. I encourage you to check detail by yourself. Uh, but uh, my comment is, in most of the cases of your machine learning and deep learning, the first things, the tensor backward, uh, is more widely used compared to the second one. Second one, I think, if you have to compute some, uh, for example, I have I have hundreds of the gradients. Oh, sorry, hundreds of variables, and each one needs the gradient. And right now, I don't want to compute all the gradients for every variables, but just gradient for one variables. So maybe the second one, I mean the touch gradient grade, this function will be helpful. But in most of the case, I have the hundreds of all the variables. I want to optimize them, optimize them in one task. I think just use this one. And here is it still gives an example. I mean, based on the logic regression you just learned. I mean. Even we offer, I think we offer some data set. Yeah. Yeah, it's, just, it's, not, it's not real data set, but it's some simulation. And, but actually, uh, PyTorch just also have some very inner support for some data set and data loaders. Uh, for here, I think it's the M MNIST data sets. Uh, it's a very classical the, uh, the, the computer vision. Uh, the classification uh, task and data sets in the computer vision and machine learning. So of course you don't have to install the data set by yourself from somewhere, but just run 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 the here code here, one line, and the PyTorch will in will download the, the whole data set of the MNIST from the internet to your old computers, and here it can even help you to I mean do some pre-process do the uh, automatically the training test validation split. So everything is very smart and very efficient. So I encourage you to, you can check the website, the, the link here to see what kind of the data set is already supported by your PyTorch. So you don't have to download by yourself, but just use the line, use the code here to download. Yeah. And of course you can here give you an example. If how about like in your, in your homework, in your project, we have you have to your own your data sets and how you build this data set in the PyTorch with the with the class. We also offer some example here. Yeah, I think that is for the uh, main part I want to give today. Uh, I know I very encourage you to go through every part. I mean we have five. We have filed the notebook here about how to use the NL module to build their, their deep neural network very efficiently and how to do the optimization. How, what's the kind of the optimizer? Uh, uh, right now, you know the SGD, just just not cause a great deal to them. But actually, beyond that, there are lots of the other more advanced optimizer you can use, we can try and plan with. We'll offer a lot the rich example in the part three examples. And uh, you want to build your own deep learning neural network or you or deep learning and or some hybrid model. I mean, some deep learning, some Bayesian, and how to how to I mean combine them together in the PyTorch class. That's detailed in the part four of notebook. And the five is actually give you a more challenge and more actually more bigger task. It's is the uh, is it is called the example by the classification. How do you build a PyTorch using your deep learning to build a complete uh, our classification, image complication class, I mean, our model from the PyTorch. And you can just step by step to run this and check the detail. And actually this C4 term is a compare, uh, compared to something like the MNIST or some data set uh, used to your project. This data set is more larger and more, I mean, I can call it formal because in, even in some very uh, published uh, paper right now, they benchmark the data set they are used is a C4. So if you are playing with these things, actually, I think you are qualified to, I mean, gather very uh, start of the art research in these machine learning fields. Okay, uh, of course, I will, I will upload this slide and the video to the course page. So after this course, and uh, but right now, I think uh, I will call it a day. 
uh, we are all finished. So thank you so much. Yeah. So if you have any questions, you are welcome to come and talk to me. So otherwise, you can you can free to go. Thank you.